Statisticians, I hope you're having a beautiful day. And I'm sorry we're not having class today. Um, uh, we had a faculty meeting scheduled for one, which was already going to mean class was going to be a little short. And then all of a sudden I find out you have a, a meeting about graduation at 1230. It just doesn't work out. Um, so as I promised, we're going to do this particular example. That was a throwback to an example we had seen in the very, very beginning of the year when we were talking about the association between categorical variables. And uh, But before I do that, I want to make a quick promise. A couple of people asked me, I think Kelly in particular asked me to Google um, uh, TT twice uh, after it sort of came up organically in class. And um, I did that. And um, that's some great K-pop, you know. Um, Good times. <laughs> definitely not not exactly um, something I would normally Google. So it was definitely a surprise, but I, I had no idea what I would encounter. And uh, anyway, that was good time. So anyways, uh, let's get back to this example. So in, in this example that we had really seen earlier, earlier in the year, we see um, this Pew Research Center study that asked a random sample of 2024 adult cell phone owners in the United States which type of cell phone they own, iPhone, Android, or something else, right? This, so this is a long time ago. Um, and then we have this information broken down by the age group people fell in. So we're going to treat age group as a variable, right? So there's this variable of people's age group. And then we have a variable here of, of the type of cell phone that people have, right? So there's two variables for us to consider. And what we're going to ask here in this particular problem is, do we have evidence of an association, right? And so um, do we have, is this statistical evidence of an association? Now, of course, within this sample itself, and we had seen this a long time ago in our course, that there there is an association within this sample itself between these variables. For instance, if I was to say, what's the probability that someone has an iPhone, right? Um, the probability someone has an iPhone was 467 out of 2024, right? So that's kind of nice. And then, um, but the probability that someone has an iPhone given, right? Say that they were in this age group here, 18 to 34, 18 to 34, is that going to be equal to that same thing? Well, we could check. The probability of someone has an iPhone given that they're 18 to 34 is 169 out of um, 517. And, and we could check. We could take out our calculators, and I'll do that right now. I'm going to say 467 divided by 2024. Um, that's around 23%. And then 169 divided by 517, that's around 33%. And so we get this this guy coming out to be, um, like I said, this guy is around 23% approximately. This guy is around 33% approximately. And, 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 and we could go through and we could see that the, the probability that you have an iPhone changes depending on which age group you're in. If we completely ignored age group, the probability was 23%. But if we look at particular age groups, we're going to see that that probability is changing. In fact, there was a higher probability that you had an iPhone given that you were in this youngest category, 18 to 34, versus... Um, if you uh, were in one of the other age groups, right? And so um, th this shows that the that having uh, a, a, that the age group and um, the type of cell phone are not independent. To say that there is no association is really the same thing as saying that they're independent. Um, to saying that they're not independent is to say that there is an association. So we see that there is an association here, and we can make like segmented bar graphs and compare stuff and really see what the associations are. But we see that there is um, an association in the sample, but is the association in the sample so significant? Is the, is the difference between um, what we actually have here and what we would have expected uh, to be the results of this study if there was no association. Is that difference so large that we'll say this is significant evidence to draw a conclusion that that same association that exists in this sample exists in the entire population of all uh, adult cell phone owners in the United States back in 2013, right? So the null hypothesis we'll make here is that there's no association, uh, let's see, no association between age group, age group, um, and uh, type of phone, or type of phone um, uh, amongst, let's see here, amongst uh, adult uh, cell phone owners 
I don't really like how this guy has this like um, little uh, cur thing following my cursor around. I wonder if there's probably some way to turn that off, but uh, I don't know right now. Among adult cell phone owners in um, uh, the U.S. <laughs> in 2013 i had a lot of details there but i was noticed that since i was writing this hypothesis in words i wanted to be clear about the two variables that i'm saying there's an association age group and um type of cell phone that says type of cell phone oh my gosh and then also indicating the population um, i'm going to be a little bit lazy here but the alternative hypothesis is simply going to be that there there is an association there is an association so in this in this type of procedure oops that the burden of proof is on showing that there is an association we're assuming that there's no association that that the that age would be independent of the type of cell phone you have unless we can find statistically significant evidence to convince us otherwise all right so th those are our hypotheses now in order to carry this out we're going to have to do a chi-square test of independence, right? And um, in order to do that, we'll have to make a couple assumptions. I'm not going to write all this out right now, but first we'll have to assume that this is a valid random sampling. And we were told that this is um, a random sample from all these uh, cell phone owners in the United States. Um, since we assume uh, definitely took the sample uh, without replacement, um, we'll, we'll have to check the 10% condition. And we'll certainly can assume that... Um, that, that there are more than 10 times 2,024, that'd be 20,024. Um, there's more than 20,000 or so adult cell phone owners in the United States in 2013. So that, that condition would certainly be satisfied. And then the last thing we'd have to check is large counts for chi-squared. And for us, that means that we would expect in each of the cells here, right? So there's in fact nine cells that we're worried about that, that in terms of the number of people that would fit into each one of those little categories, we would have to expect at least each of those numbers to be at least five. Now, based on our sample size, 2024, I, I, it's almost certain that we'll have at least five um, people expected to fit within each of those categories, but we won't really know until we calculate the expected. So how do we calculate the expected? Well, let's calculate the expected based on the null uh, uh, hypothesis of no association. Let's kind of do that right now, right? So what I'm going to do is actually going to roughly draw another table, right? And hopefully this computer is not this computer is not responding as quickly as I'd like, but um, we'll, we'll hopefully it'll we'll survive this, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw just kind of a rough table kind of lining things up with what I have up there, roughly speaking. And this is really a three by three table. <laughs> it's a little ugly. And so let's calculate the expected. So this was iPhone, this was Android, um, this was other, right? And I'm not gonna write the age groups there, but it all is in the same order. So how do we get the expected? Well, re remember that uh, under the null hypothesis, essentially the probability of getting an iPhone, right? should be the same for each one of these categories and the same is overall. So for instance, 467 over 2024 should have been the same as 127 over 870, which should have been the same as 171 out of 637, which should have been the same as 169 of 517. That's what it would mean for there to be no association. Now, those aren't all the same and we could calculate them and see that they're not, but that's what, it sh that's what we should be getting if there really was no association here. So how am I going to um, try to show uh, what the true expecteds ought to be? Well, I'm just gonna basically, you could set up a bunch of proportions, right? The, so since 467 divided by 2024 is a kind of percentage that came out to about 23%. And so that should mean about 23% of this 517 people should have been um, uh, in that category. So for instance, we should, uh, this expected will end up being like 467 out of 2024. We'll treat that as a fraction and we'd multiply that by 517. And whatever that comes out to is what we should have expected to have there if there was no association. So 467 divided by 2024, um, I'll multiply that by 517 and I get 119.3 approximately. So it's around um, uh, 119, I'm gonna get a different color. 119.3, right? And similarly, I would expect something just like that over here. So if I had, in this case, 467 out of 2024, um, and then I would multiply that by now 637, because that was the total number of people in that age group, then that should have been what I expected to get um, 
for the number of people in the 35 to 54. So that would have been that time 637. And I got 146.97. So it's actually around 147.0. Well, I'm going to change my color. 147.0, right? If you can read that. And so on. So actually, I had calculated all these earlier. And I could just keep going through. And I'm, I'm a little lazy. Um, I don't really feel like uh, doing that. So I'm going to actually, I'm going to, I'm getting my list of the answers here right now. And there's actually a way that your calculator can do it all for you as well too, but I'm just going to ignore that fact for now. So anyway, if I wrote down the rest of the expecteds where I could do it sort of using these formulas, um, this guy would be 200.74 about, this guy would be around 128.48, this would be 158.31, uh, 216.21, and I have 269.23, um, and then I have 331.72, and then finally 453.05. Um, that's a three there, it looks like a B. Um, let me fix that 453.05. Right, so, just in terms of checking the conditions, um, in terms of our large counts condition if we're um, trying to verify that we have at least a sufficient number of expecteds, uh, this is definitely satisfied. Every single one of our expected, expecteds here based on the null hypothesis of no association uh, is definitely greater than five. So we can make a reference to the table and we could say in this table of all the expected values, um, we can see that um, all of these expecteds are at least five. And so we're justified in doing, and we'll, we'll have here is a chi-square test of association. All right, so let's carry out that chi-square test, right? And remember in the chi-square test, right? Our, our statistic fundamentally, and I'll, actually I'll write this right here. The statistic is a chi-square statistic and it's a sum. It's the sum of, um, dun, 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 let me erase this here. Whoa, my gosh. I should just do this with pen and paper, right? Um, this is our test statistic, our test statistic. Um, it's the sum of each of our observed values minus what we expected squared over the expected, right? So we're gonna look at all the departures we have from our expectations here, right? Um, and we'll square that sort of the residual of, of what we actually observe minus what we expected. We'll square that and we'll divide that by the expected, kind of making it almost kind of like an average and adding it all up. So um, let's see here. Uh, the first difference that we would look at is say like 119.3 versus what did we actually observe? 169, right? So that, that wasn't the same. So if we were looking at this chi-square, now this is kind of annoying. I'm not going to write down all the calculations, but our first calculation would have said, all right, we initially observed 169 people that owned iPhones and were 18 to 34. However, we only expected there to be 119.3 of them, right? And so that was not the same. And so I would take this, that difference, I'd square it and divide by 119.3. So let's check. That would be like uh, 169 minus 119.3, um, let's square that. Ooh, that's our, that's a big number, 2,470.09. And then I'll divide that by 119.3, and I got 20.7. Now, already, right, just looking at that, 20.7, right, that, that's already, ding, 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 um, pretty significant for me here because, um, uh, but and I'll, I'll talk about why in just a second. And then let's just let's just do another one of these examples. So at least another one of the calculations. So what else? For instance, I don't know. Let's let's be somewhat orderly. Let's look at these people. We saw 214 people who were 18 to 34 that owned an Android, right? And so we could say there's 214 of those people. But how many did we expect to see? Well, we only expected to see 128.48. So 214 minus 128.48. And we would square that, right? And divide by 128.48. And, um, oh my gosh, this, my computer, I don't know if you can hear the uh, fan on my computer because my computer is going into overdrive here. Um, it doesn't like recording this screen. And uh, while I'm using this pen and stuff. All right, so. That, that that was another big departure, and I got a chi-squared 
contribution of 56.9 about. So this is 56.9. Now, um, if, you, if we realize here, dot, 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 I mean, we could go and do this for a total of nine times because there was nine kind of little um, sections to our table. It was a three by three table. And so there would be nine observed values and nine expected in each one of those. We already see that our chi-square statistic is going to be over right here. We already see it's going to be over 76. I mean, this, this chi-squared is big. So actually, I, I did calculate the chi-squared earlier. Um, and it's, it's too annoying to sit here and calculate the whole thing. And as it comes out, the chi-squared statistic comes out to being 333.65 approximately, right? Um, all right, so is that a big chi-square? <laughs> oh, man, right? Well, how would we evaluate this? The way we could evaluate this is by thinking about it in terms of the correct chi-square distribution. So uh, another dimension here that we didn't talk about is sort of what's the, the, the chi-square distribution that we would use to think about this chi-squared statistic? Well, in this case, remember that the chi-square distributions change with the sample, or not, excuse me, not with the, oh, I said change with the sample size. They change with the degree of freedom. And remember, degree of freedom is not connected with sample size here with chi-squares. It's connected with the total number of categories that we have, right? And so remember we saw as a quick little, as a trick here, that to get the degree of freedom, which uh, we, we represent with the Greek letter nu, right? It's kind of like a V. Um, remember, the degree of freedom was the number of, um, rows minus one times the number of columns minus one. And in our class yesterday, we, we kind of saw why that worked. So the number of rows minus one, so it's like R minus one times columns minus one. And so the number of rows in this case was three, three minus one is two, the number of columns, uh, three minus one is two. And so that comes out to four. So we're talking about a chi-squared distribution with four degrees of freedom. We, we learned in a previous class that if you uh, sketched that chi-square distribution with four degrees of freedom, that you would have uh, something that's skewed to the right. All right, there's our skew to the right. And we know that the mode of a chi-square distribution is two less than the degree of freedom, right? And so since the degree of freedom was four, the mode, the very peak of this guy would occur at two. We also said that the, and so this is one, that's two, here's three. We know that the degree of freedom itself is the mean, right? And so that's kind of fun. So that gives us some perspective that the mean would be like right about there. Um, there's our mode right there. And so what what do we, what will we say here? Well, we have this chi-squared statistic and uh, we, excuse me, we have this chi-squared distribution um, and we're gonna use this to try to, uh, try to decide is it is 333.65 a big chi-squared? Yeah, it's 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 ridiculous. It's huge, right? Remember the way that we tell if it's real big is to buy is like with a p value that the p value would be the 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 probability of getting a chi squared statistic larger uh, or at least excuse me at least as large as the one we actually observed. So what's the probability of a chi squared that's at least as big as three hundred thirty three point six five? Well, we can tell. I mean, three hundred thirty three point six five is is completely off the charts here. It's gonna be approximately um, zero. It's not actually zero. In fact, I calculated it earlier and I got <laughs> 5 5.95109 times 10 to the negative 71st power. I mean, that's crazy, right? What does this mean for us? Well, in the end of the day, we have uh, this uh, sample, a nice size sample, 2,024 uh, adult cell phone owners. And remember, the null hypothesis was that there was no association. Um, we found a p-value that was ridiculously small, smaller than any level of significance someone can think of. And therefore, what would we do? Well, we will reject the null hypothesis. We will reject the null hypothesis. We will say we have, because our p-value is close to zero, it's lower than any level of significance we could think of. We will reject the null hypothesis, right? We have significant evidence that there is in fact an association between the type of phone people own and their age group, uh, at least amongst in the population of adult uh, cell phone owners in the United States in the year 2013, right? 
I mean, it, there is an association. Now, saying that we've concluded that there is an association is not really a statement about how strong that association is. Wouldn't it be nice if we had some way of measuring the strength of an association in categorical data? We had one when we had um, uh, paired uh, quantitative data. Remember when we were talking about lines of best fit and we talked about correlation, or the, the correlation coefficient r or r squared are both ways of trying to describe exactly how strong an association is between two variables, right? Um, we don't have that in AP stat. We haven't talked about how you could measure the strength of a correlation in categorical data. But do you think statisticians have come up with a way? Of course they have. It's just outside the scope of our course. All we were able to conclude here is because our p-value is so small that uh, we have very, very very strong evidence of an association between these two variables, between the age group and the type of cell phone, at least back in 2013. Um, today, do you think the association would be as strong? I don't know. Actually, I suspect maybe it wouldn't be quite as strong anymore because I think almost everyone now has iPhones and Androids, regardless of what age group you're in. And so I don't know that it would be quite as strong as it was back in 2013, but who knows? We don't have the data for that. So my friends, I hope this was a helpful example. Um, uh, I hope you have a beautiful weekend and I'm sorry we didn't have class today, but uh, I will catch you on Monday. And oh, before I go, remember you have those two projects to work on. So please make sure you get those projects done. They're great ways to help bring up your grade during this last week uh, of, uh, of marking period before grades are done. And uh, then most of you graduate. So anyway, have a beautiful day and uh, catch you on the flip side.